So, Roberto Luongo has retired. And that's a very big deal for two teams in particular in the National Hockey League. The Florida Panthers, who he just played for last year, and actually more so for the Vancouver Canucks. Because you see, kids, many moons and one lockout ago, there used to be no seven or eight year cap on how long a contract could be. You could just make it however long as you want. Rick DiPietro got 15 years, that was dumb. Luongo didn't quite get 15, but he did get forever and ever amen, and he's not even gonna play the final three years of his deal, so that will result in a cap recapture penalty for both the Panthers and the Canucks. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. If you want, I'll link to a video at the end of this one featuring Faisal Kamisa and Chris Johnson where they break it all down. I wanna talk about Roberto Luongo, the man, the legend, the, the goalie, what a goalie. The golden goalie, if you will. Roberto Luongo is the subject of so many what-if scenarios. Which shouldn't be surprising because he got drafted 22 years ago. As a matter of fact, the draft that we just had in Vancouver this past weekend, none of the players who were picked were even alive when Roberto Luongo made his way into the National Hockey League. Wendell Clark, is that a name that's familiar to you? I bet it is. He was a Leaf. He was a captain of the Leafs. And then he got traded to the Quebec Nordiques and in exchange for, in part, Matt Sundin. That worked out pretty good for the Leafs. Clark got traded to the New York Islanders, and in March of 1996, the Leafs decided they want him back. So on March 13th, 1996, the Leafs acquire Wendell Clark, defender Matthew Schneider, and DJ Smith, who was actually just the Leafs' assistant coach and is now the head coach of the Ottawa Senators. Ottawa Senator, why did I say it like that? In exchange, the Islanders get Sean Haggerty, Darby Hedrickson, Kenny Janssen, and a 1997 first round pick. Ooh, a mystery box. Ah, the Leafs, they never learned. The Leafs should know better than almost any team that trading your first round pick over a year ahead of time often bites you because you never know when you're gonna suck. For example, a few years prior, the Leafs traded away their first round pick, did not anticipate sucking, and they ended up giving New Jersey the pick that drafted Scott Niedermeyer. Fast forward to this trade, the Leafs get Wendell Clark back, everyone celebrates, and then they proceed to give up the fourth overall pick to the New York Islanders. And with that pick, the Islanders select Roberto Luongo. Luongo's rookie season was the 99-2000 season. He played 22 games, put up a 904 save percentage, but whatever, he's a rookie. But guess what the Islanders did? <laughs> At the end of Luongo's rookie season, the Islanders had the first overall pick, and they used that to select Rick DiPietro, another goalie. Worth mentioning, the second overall pick that season Danny Heatley. June 24, 2000, the Islanders make a trade. They get forwards Oleg Kavasha and Mark Parrish. And to the Florida Panthers, the Islanders send Ole Jokinen, oof, and Roberto Luongo, oof. In 2013, Rick DiPietro was bought out by the Islanders using a compliance buyout. Remember those things? DiPietro cost the Islanders nothing against the cap, which is wonderful, but they're going to be paying him $1.5 million in cash every year until 2029. That's a decade from now, because math. So how'd that trade work out? Roberto Luongo retires second all-time among goalies with 1,044 games played and third in wins with 489. That's how you know he is done done, man. 11 wins shy of 500. He probably could have picked those 11 wins up this season. He opted not to. He's going to retire. He's going to spend some time with his family. He's done. He's given the NHL all that he can. He's 40 years old now. There's a couple unfortunate notes with his career, for sure. His tenure with the Vancouver Canucks was bizarre. In eight seasons with the Canucks, Luongo put up a 920 save percentage or higher three times, including a 928 in 60 games in 2010-11. Which is unbelievable and ridiculous. Unfortunately, some of that is clouded by the fiasco that was the 2011 Stanley Cup Final against the Boston Bruins. The Canucks are up two games to zero. All of a sudden, it looks like they're going to walk to their first ever Stanley Cup. Bruins get back in the series. All of a sudden, questions arise as to whether or not Corey Schneider should be the starter mid-final. Bruins win in seven, and it was never quite the same after that. The Canucks would even go on to win the President's Trophy the following season, only to run into the juggernaut LA Kings in the first round. But that's 2012. That's 2011. What about 2010? He was Canada's goalie in net on home ice in Vancouver for the 2010 Olympics. Er, well, he was one of them. Martin Brodeur was between the pipes for Canada to start, and Luongo actually stole that job. And thank goodness he did too because of the gold medal game. What does everyone talk about with that game? Everyone talks about the golden goal, Sidney Crosby, Jerome McGinley with the setup pass, the 
right, heard around the world. You know what nobody talks about? About 15 seconds before that goal goes in the net, maybe even less, Roberto Luongo makes the save of the tournament on Joe Pavelski. A very brief synopsis of what happened, Scott Niedemeyer, the captain of the Canadian Olympic team, gives the puck away. Joe Pavelski has a wide open chance in front. Luongo gets just a piece of it and the game continues. This was overtime in the gold medal game. In that moment, Luongo saved his legacy, Scott Niedemeyer's legacy for sure, and Canadian pride, bragging rights forever. Can you imagine if Canada coughed that up after having a 2-0 lead in the gold medal game? The golden goal was wonderful and I enjoyed it immensely, but none of that happens unless Luongo robs Pavelski in overtime. That's an alternate history that Nope, don't need to live that. One thing I've seen a lot of hockey fans talk about, especially on hockey Twitter, about Luongo's career is the missed opportunity in Vancouver. To me, the missed opportunity with his career was in Florida. Because Luongo played 448 games as a Vancouver Canuck, played eight seasons there, and in six of those seasons, they made the playoffs. That's pretty good. Roberto Luongo played 572 regular season games with the Florida Panthers, parts of 11 seasons. Remember, we're talking about the goalie with the second most ever games played and the third most ever wins. How many playoff appearances did the Florida Panthers have while Luongo was a Panther? I'll let you mull that over in your head. Remember, he played almost 600 games with them, 11 seasons, second ever in games played, third most wins. He won a lot of games. Give you a couple more seconds. Time's up. One. One stinking playoff appearance they had. And whoa, 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 I'm not criticizing Roberto Luongo for that. He was fantastic. Over 572 regular season games with the Panthers, he had a 919 save percentage and a 2.61 goals against average. That's not just giving your team a chance to win on a nightly basis, that is sparkling. And he had a losing record with them. 230 wins, 241 losses, and 73 ties or over time losses because he played in an era where there were ties by the way. With Roberto Luongo, with one of the best goalies of all time, in 11 seasons the Florida Panthers made the playoffs one stinking time. Six playoff games they got out of one of the best goalies ever, first ballot Hall of Famer. So having said all of that, as a fan of hockey, of the sport of the league, Florida Panthers, thanks for nothing. I've heard a lot of hockey fans talk about Henrik Lundqvist like he's hard done by. Holy cow. They talk about goalies standing on their heads. The Panthers made Luongo play most of his career with a purple face. So if that Bruins series went a little differently in 2011, if that juggernaut of a Kings team didn't randomly come together at the trade deadline in 2012, if the Florida Panthers gave Luongo any goal support ever, there's so many what ifs, but there's no what if. There's no denying the fact that Roberto Luongo is one of the best goalies to ever play in the NHL. He did everything for his teams except score goals. And looking at some of the teams that he played on, if he coulda, he woulda. Although worth noting, 23 career assists. Luongo's actually tied for 46th in career scoring by players selected in the 1997 NHL draft. He was 46th out of 246. He is a goaltender. And what a goaltender. What a career. Leave a comment down below. What is your favorite Roberto Luongo moment? I, I know what mine is. I was, I was in the building for that. That's, that's the ticket. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you want more information on the cap recapture for the Canucks and for the Florida Panthers, like I said earlier in the video, there's another video by Faisal Kamisa and also Chris Johnston where they talk about that. So check that out. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends that Roberto Luongo has more time to tweet now and that's just, that's just a treat.